Hello friend, uh, welcome to the lecture. Uh, here we continue our discussion which we have started in uh, previous uh, lecture. So, uh, what we have seen in uh, previous lecture that uh, uh, this existence and uniqueness theorem which we have considered uh, is a local existence theorem and uh, it only discuss the existence in a small neighborhood of initial point and that we have seen uh, using uh, one example that is y dash equal to y square uh, with the initial condition y 0 equal to 2. It means that we have considered this y dash equal to y square and y 0 equal to 2. Here we have shown that uh, solution actually exists in a larger interval, but if we uh, use our existence and uniqueness theorem and then uh, this interval is quite small that is given as modulus of t less than 1 by 8. So, here uh, this uh, says that our theorem is a local existence theorem which gives a uh, solution only in a small neighborhood of uh, initial point. And the proof of the uh, uh, this existence and uniqueness theorem requires a Lipschitz continuity of the nonlinear function even when we only required existence uh, of the solution. So, uh, for this will give not only existence, but also uh, guaranteed the uniqueness of the uh, solution. But if, uh, in some cases we need only the existence, there uh, this uh, is a kind of uh, strict um, uh, theorem, it is requiring a lot of um, uh, more thing. So, uh, in this regard uh, the existence of a solution uh, this theorem 1 is not the only and best result, we have uh, one more uh, result which is uh, which gives the existence of solution without uh, uniqueness, without guarantee uh, without, without giving guarantee for uniqueness and what such important results uh, we can give it right now that suppose f is continuous on the rectangle r and suppose modulus of f t y is bounded by uh, some constant m for all point t y in that rectangle r and let alpha be the smaller of the positive numbers a and b by m that we have already defined as a rectangle. Then there is a solution y of the differential equation 1 that satisfies the initial condition 2 existing on the interval modulus of t minus t naught less than or equal to alpha. The only difference between this and the previous uh, existence and uniqueness theorem that here we have not assumed that f t y satisfy the Lipschitz condition. So, here this Lipschitz condition is removed. So, uh, by removing this uh, we uh, lost the uh, guarantee of uh, uniqueness. So, here we have only the guarantee of existence and solution may be unique may not be unique. So, let us uh, look at uh, one example. So, consider the equation y dash equal to 3 y uh, to power 2 by 3 y 0 equal to 0 here and initial condition is given as y 0 equal to 0 and if you look at uh, your f t y is given as y to power 2 by 3 and we can check that uh, the uh, it does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition uh, in several way and if you look at um, um, you can find out the partial derivative dev f by dev y t y is equal to 2 uh, uh, 2 y to power minus 1 by 3 and we can also check that uh, an indirect uh, uh, thing that uh, f does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition and hence we cannot apply existence and uniqueness theorem uh, 1 to get any result about the existence and uniqueness of the solution. In fact, uh, that will not also give the uh, condition that it has a solution also. So, here uh, we observe that f is continuous in the whole uh, T y plane and we can apply the uh, previous theorem that is theorem 2 to this problem. And in fact, there is an infinite number of solution 0 0. So, since f t y is continuous we can apply the previous theorem theorem 2. Uh, and we can say that uh, this f t y is bounded by uh, in if we define uh, our rectangle in a proper way, then we can say that this f t y is continuous and in a closed rectangle it will achieve the maximum value that is uh, some constant m. So, here uh, we guarantee the existence of a solution, we may not have the uniqueness and we have seen that in particular in this particular problem, we have an infinite number of solution. Uh, passing through 0 0 and we can say that for every constant c greater than 0 the function y c defined by this y c t equal to 0, 0 is between minus infinity to c and t minus c to power 3 where t is defined from c to infinity is a solution of 
this y dash equal to 3 by 3 y to power 2 by 3 and which passes through 0 0 and this is a one parameter family of solution. In fact, you can define two parameter family of solution of the same problem. So, it means that here not only the solution exists, but solutions are infinite in number. So, in addition 0 function is also a solution of this initial value problem and of course, for every initial point t naught y naught with y naught not equal to 0 we have existence by theorem 1. So, if you look at uh, this y 0 equal to 0 this initial condition is creating problem for uh, this uh, initial value problem. If we remove this uh, initial condition y 0 by some non 0 uh, number then we can apply our um, uh, existence and uniqueness theorem and we can say that it has a unique solution. So, if we consider y not not equal to 0 we have a unique solution in a, uh, a rectangle where uh, y not is not equal to 0 is a point. But if we have a, uh, if we consider a, a rectangle where we have y 0 equal to 0 then uh, we will lose we lose the uh, uniqueness and in fact, we can see that we have uh, one parameter family of solution given by this equation y c t equal to this thing and in fact, if you do a little bit more we can uh, define two parameter family of solution of the same problem. So, uh, moving on uh, next uh, we say that, uh, so what we have done we lo uh, we removed the uh, Lipschitz condition on uh, f and we lost uh, we have no guarantee that solution is, is unique or not. But uh, if you look at if in addition to this assumption of theorem 2 the function f is monotonically non increasing in y for each fixed t on r then the initial value problem 1 2 has a unique solution. So, it means that to uh, compensate the uh, loss uh, if we put one more addition condition that f is monotonically non increasing in y for each t then we uh, regain the uniqueness of the solution. Here uh, will not provide uh, any solution of the theorem 2 and this corollary because it uh, is a little bit uh, involved and it requires um, uh, some more advanced um, uh, theory. So, we are not giving uh, this thing, but we observe uh, this thing that uh, it is not possible to prove the theorem 2 by the method of successive approximation that one thing we have to point out that um, here uh, the proof of this theorem 2 and this uh, corollary 5 is not uh, given with the help of successive approximation. Because here as the successive approximation may not converge under the hypothesis of theorem 2. So, we can look at the uh, following example where we have seen we will see that uh, the condition given in theorem 2 is not sufficient to give um, uh, surety for uh, convergence of approximate successive approximations. So, let us uh, consider this example consider the function f defined in the region d in the t y plane where d is given by minus infinity to 1 and minus infinity to plus infinity and f t y is given as 0 when uh, minus infinity to t less than or equal to 0 and minus infinity uh, less than y less than infinity and 2 t when uh, 0 less than t less than 1 and minus infinity less than y less than 0. And similarly, we can define um, um, in uh, different different uh, reason the function f t y and here we can say that f t y is uh, continuous and bounded by the constant 2 on d. So, continuous uh, to see that it is continuous you just look at the uh, 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 function f t y and you can see that if we move from um, uh, right hand side uh, to left hand side uh, and left hand side you will get the uh, same value. So, it is a con uh, continuous function and it is bounded by 2 on domain d. And uh, if you want to find out the successive approximation for this uh, particular problem y dash equal to f t y and we can check that uh, the successive approximation is given by y naught t equal to 0 and um, uh, y 2 k minus 1 t equal to t square and y 2 k t is equal to minus t square and it means that all the odd uh, <coughs> successive approximation is given by t square and or the even uh, uh, approximation is given by minus t square and so, uh, so that here solution is oscillating between t square and minus t square so, and since it is oscillating this uh, approximation uh, will not converge to the uh, solution which we are searching for. So, here we can say that there is a successive approximation alternate between t square and minus t square and do not converge. 
since the function f t y is continuous unbounded. So, our theorem 2 will be applicable and we can say that existence of a solution exists. And not only this, uh, we can observe that this function f is monotonically non increasing in y for every fixed t and so corollary 5 is also applicable and this gives that we have a unique solution uh, 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 of this particular problem. So, not only this, so here we can say that this uh, uh, here uh, uh, successive approximation do exist, but they will not converge to a solution, but still this problem has a solution and not only that uh, solution exists, it will have a unique solution. So, uh, how to find out this uh, y not t equal to 0 and y k 2 k minus 1 t square, I will just show you uh, this condition y dash y 1 is going to be what, since uh, y 0 is given as uh, 0 here. So, here we simply say it is um, uh, 0 to t and f s y of s y not s and d s. Now, uh, since y not s uh, y not is given as 0, so f s uh, 0 is going to be uh, here uh, it is 2 t. So, here it is um, uh, equality is given, so it is given as 2 t. So, we can say that 0 to t and 2 s d s. Uh, so, it is given as say t square. So, here we can say that y 1 is given as t square. Now, to find out uh, y 2, y 2 is given as um, 0 to t and f of s um, and uh, y 1 s d s. Now, y 1 s is t square, so it will uh, lie here. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so here we write f s y s as 2 t minus 4 y 1 upon t. So, what is this? Uh, let me uh, do it here. Uh, so, here we have uh, y 1 uh, y 2 as uh, 0 to uh, t, it is 2 t minus 4 y upon t dt. So, here uh, we have y 1. So, y 1 is given as t square. So, here we can write it 0 to t, 2 t minus 4 into t square upon t and dt. So, here uh, here there is a small uh, abuse of uh, notation, I should write uh, 2 s minus 4 y 1 upon s d s. Um, so, uh, if you have no um, uh, ambiguity, let me write it here. So, here uh, we can write this as uh, 0 to t, 2 t minus and this I can write it 4 t d t and this we can write it um, 0 to t minus 2 t d t. So, that is given as uh, minus of t square. So, please uh, uh, here uh, uh, we let us write it t 1 here, so that uh, we, we, we should not have any confusion. So, here we have that y 2 is given as minus t square and we have seen that y 1 is given as t square and similarly you can calculate y 3, y 4 and so on and we can observe that uh, y naught t is 0 and y um, all the odd uh, approximation given by t square and or the even um, given by minus t square. So, here approximation uh, approximate solution will not converge to any uh, solution and so we cannot uh, cannot apply theorem 1 to find out the uh, solution of this particular problem, but we can apply theorem 2 and corollary to find out that it has a solution and not only the uh, solution it will have a unique solution. So, we may conclude the following thing that assurance of merely existence of solution does not require Lipschitz condition. So, it means that Lipschitz condition is required only for uh, uniqueness. If we drop the uniqueness uh, Lipschitz condition that uh, uh, may not guarantee uh, the whether the solution exists or not. So, we can say that if we want only for existence then we do not require Lipschitz condition we need only continuity, only continuity of f is required in y. So, only if we require only existence, continuity of f is sufficient. Now, here approximation do not converge, but still we have a unique solution. So, it means that uh, approximation solution converge and having a unique solution, these two are two different things. So, it means that continuity of f and uniqueness of solution do not imply the convergence of approximate solution. So, in particular in previous problem, we have a unique solution we have uh, so uh, and but still the successive approximation solution does not converge so we can say that their uniqueness result and convergence of successive approximation are two different independent phenomena 
So, it means that uh, here it is not related we in previous class uh, in previous lecture we have uh, seen that Lipschitz continuity uh, uh, is required for uniqueness uh, of the solution, but here we have shown that uh, we have a uh, unique solution, but still we do not require Lipschitz continuity, uh, Lipschitz continuity and we also do not have the um, convergence of successive approximation. So, we say that convergence of successive approximation and uniqueness are two different phenomena. Okay. Now, uh, let us um, move forward for system of first order equation and we try to discuss the existence and uniqueness theorem which we have developed for scalar differential equation for the system of uh, first order equation. So, here we are looking or, uh, of a system of first order equation. We now wish to consider the ex extension of existence and uniqueness theorem to system of first order equation of the form y is equal to f t y. So, here uh, uh, this represent what here y and f are vectors with n components n t is a scalar. So, I can write this as uh, the following. So, here we have y dash equal to f t y. So, here this y uh, is a vector of dimension n cross 1. Similarly, your f is also a vector of n cross 1 and we can write this as y 1 dash equal to f 1 t y 1 y 2 and y n here similarly y 2 dash equal to f 2 t y 2 uh, sorry y 1 y 2 and y n and so on. So, it means that uh, this y dash equal to f t y represent this system of first order ordinary differential equation. So, here uh, we can write this y 1 to y n as y here. So, it is n cross 1 here. Similarly, we can write f as f 1 and so on f n. So, here if we use the vector notation as this, then we can uh, write down this system of first order equation as y dash equal to f t y. So, so, that represent the system of first order uh, uh, ordinary differential equation and here uh, we assume this uh, condition that let f be a continuously differential with respect to t and with uh, respect to the components of y at all points of d. And suppose that there exists a constant k greater than 0 says that the norms of devra f by devra y j satisfy this following condition. So, here um, to get that uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. Uh, we talk about the first uh, uh, theorem which we have discussed which is known as Picard iteration um, uh, uh, scheme. So, uh, to generalize that uh, we assume that f is a continuously differentiable function. So, here we assume this first thing with respect to t and with respect to the component y of. So, it means that here dever f by dever y j uh, t y uh, is less than or equal to k. Here this represent norm. I hope that uh, you are aware about this uh, function norm. It is a generalized distance function satisfying certain condition. So, we are uh, using this as a norm here. So, so, if we have these condition then we can say that then f satisfy the Lipschitz condition in D. So, it means that here we are assuming that uh, a partial derivative of f exists with respect to the component y j and it is bounded then we can say that it satisfy uh, then it guarantees that the function f satisfy the Lipschitz condition and how we can guarantee that here we can write uh, we can define a new function g sigma which is given as f t z plus sigma y minus z. And if you look at this is defined uh, as uh, one variable of uh, sigma here if you put sigma equal to 0 then it is nothing but f t z, but if you take sigma as 1 then it is nothing but f t y. So, with the help of g sigma we uh, define this uh, uh, value consider value this f t y minus f t z as g 1 minus z 0. So, uh, g, this g 1 minus z 0 is given by 0 to 1 z as sigma d sigma. So, using mean value theorem we can uh, write g 1 minus z 0 as 0 to 1 g dash uh, sigma d sigma and uh, by the chain rule we can find out uh, g dash sigma as this. So, here uh, we use a notation f y j equal to dever f by dever y j for j equal to 1 to n and we can write g dash sigma as f y 1 here we are using uh, fi uh, finding the uh, 
um, derivative of g sigma with respect to sigma. So, here we can write f y 1 t z plus sigma y minus z and multiplied by y 1 minus z 1 plus f y 2. So, here a partial uh, derivative of with respect to y 2 uh, argument is same y 2 minus z 2 and so on. So, here we can write norm of f t y minus f t z is equal to 0 to 1 z dash sigma d sigma and z dash sigma is given by this quantity. So, we can write this as since uh, f y 1 this is bounded by k this is bounded by k and all these are bounded by k. So, we can take it out and what is left here is uh, modulus of y 1 minus z 1 plus modulus of y 2 minus z 2 and so on and uh, this we can say that this is nothing but y uh, norm of y minus z. Here we are using one norm of uh, y. So, here we define what is one norm of y. So, one norm of y is given as um, if y is given as uh, y 1 to y n then one norm of y 1 is given as modulus of y 1 plus modulus of y 2 and so on modulus of y n. So, here we are using one norm and we can say that modulus of f t y minus f t z is uh, less than or equal to k times y minus z and we say that that function f t y satisfy the Lipschitz continuity uh, Lipschitz uh, condition uh, in uh, the variable y. So, it means that if we assume only this condition that uh, partial derivative exist uh, um, with respect to component of y and it is bounded then f satisfy the Lipschitz condition which is verified here. So, uh, now we uh, define the uh, theorem that let f n double f by double y j be continuous on the box b t y where modulus of t minus t naught is less than or equal to a and norm of y minus eta less than or equal to b here eta represent the initial condition y at t naught where a and b are positive numbers and satisfying the bound modulus of f t y is less than or equal to m here uh, sorry it, it is norm of f t y is less than or equal to m and norm of double f by double y j is less than or equal to k for t y in b. And here let us uh, take the alpha uh, be the smaller of the number a and b by n and define the successor approximation as we define in theorem 1 phi naught eta uh, phi naught t as eta and phi n t as eta plus t naught to t f s phi n minus 1 s t s. Then this sequence phi j of successor approximation converges uniformly on the interval modulus of t minus t naught less than or equal to alpha to a solution phi t of phi that satisfied the initial condition phi t naught equal to eta and the solution is given as we have uh, done in uh, case of theorem 1. The only thing is that here modulus is replaced by norm. So, here uh, so we have not um, uh, given emphasis on this uh, this represent norm uh, in uh, uh, vector case. So, it means that theorem 1 you can exactly uh, write it here the only understanding we have to assume that uh, this is not a modular sign this is a norm in n dimension. <coughs> so, uh, and um, similarly we can define the uniqueness of solution. So, our next goal is to prove the uh, that under suitable hypothesis there is only one solution phi of differential equation y is equal to f t y with the initial condition phi t naught equal to eta and uh, here uh, the condition is Lipschitz condition. So, uh, suppose f n double f by double y j, j from 1 to n are continuous on this rectangle uh, b, then there exists at most one solution of 1 satisfying the initial condition 12. So, here uh, we can say uh, next theorem that uh, suppose f is continuous on the rectangle r which is defined like this and monotone non increasing in y for each fixed t on the rectangle r, then the initial value problem has at most one solution on any interval j with t naught as left hand point. So, here uh, we have discussed uh, uh, this theorem uh, that is uh, existing theory for system of first order equation that if uh, f is continuous differentiable and satisfy this uh, equation number 6 uh, uh, that uh, partial derivative exists and bounded by k then solution exists and not only the solution exists it will have a unique solution that is given by uniqueness of solution. So, the same condition is also uh, 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 true for having existence of uh, unique solution of this. And uh, if we assume only uh, uh, the continuity part then we have uh, uh, one solution of the uh, system. So, here uh, we will take uh, just one quick uh, example and here we uh, uh, look at the uh, problem y dash equal to 
gt u uh, gt uh, y here and uh, we uh, and here y is given as y1 and y2 so it is in two dimension and we want to find out uh, that uh, here um, this g x u which is defined as uh, a 1 1 u 1 plus a 1 2 u 2 comma a 2 1 u 1 plus a 2 2 u 2. Then this function g is actually satisfying the uh, Lipschitz condition. Here we are uh, not um, applying the uh, result that uh, partial derivative exists with respect to the component. Here we can use uh, um, other method to show that it has a uh, the it satisfy the Lipschitz condition. For that uh, just look at uh, model uh, norm of g x u minus g x v. Now, what is uh, g x u? g x u is given by this minus g x v we also put it here. So, it is norm of a 1 1 u 1 minus v 1 plus a 1 2 u 2 minus v 2 comma a 2 1 uh, u 1 minus v 1 plus a 2 2 u 2 minus v 2. So, here uh, we can simply uh, write that uh, this is less than or equal to uh, uh, here we define the norm uh, y as one norm. So, norm 1 as y 1 plus y 2 modulus of this. So, using one norm we can write this as um, this is nothing but modulus of a 1 1 u 1 minus u v 1 plus a 1 2 u 2 minus v 2 plus uh, here uh, we are using one norm uh, modulus of a 2 1 u 1 minus v 1 plus a 2 2 u 2 minus v 2. So, and uh, this is less than or equal to uh, uh, same quantity you can write it and here if we write it a 1 1 plus a 2 1 uh, then uh, multiply u 1 minus v 1 plus this quantity multiplied by u 2 minus v 2. So, if we uh, take the maximum of this quantity and this quantity or you can say maximum of modulus of a 1 1 plus a 2 1 comma a 2 a 1 2 plus a 2 2 then we can write it uh, modulus of u 1 minus v 1 plus u 2 minus v 2 and if you look at this is nothing but the one norm of uh, u minus v. So, it means that we can write that uh, here uh, this is less than or equal to maximum of a 1 1 plus a 2 uh, to 1 comma a 1 2 plus a 2 2 then uh, uh, norm of uh, so one norm of uh, g x u minus g x v is less than or equal to k which is denoted by this uh, maximum value times u norm of u minus v. So, here what we have shown here is the following thing that uh, g x u minus g x uh, v one norm is less than or equal to k times u minus v 1 norm and 1 norm is defined like this that uh, it is the sum of the absolute uh, value of the component. So, here uh, we have shown that that uh, g satisfy the Lipschitz condition in 1 norm and here we have to note down one, uh, one important thing that uh, uh, in R n uh, here let me write uh, the some re result that here in uh, R n all uh, the, uh, we can define several norm. So, let me write it a uh, few norms. So, first of all what is norm here? Norm is basically a function from R n cross R n to say um, R plus union singleton 0 and it satisfies certain properties that is norm of x is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is one property. Another property is that norm of x uh, 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 minus y is same as norm of uh, y minus x or you can say that uh, norm of alpha x is given as modulus of alpha norm of x here. And it satisfy one more important property that norm of x plus y is the less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of y. So, it is a uh, generalized uh, distance function we can say and in R n we can define several norms and the com, uh, common norm is uh, norm 1 that is if we look at x as x 1 to say x n then norm 1 norm is given as modulus of x 1 plus modulus of x 2 and so on modulus of x n. So, this is one norm and you can define two norm like this that it is under root of x 1 square plus x 2 square and so on and infinity norm which we can say that it is supremum of x i and i is 
from 1 to an n. So, here we can say that we can define several norms uh, um, 1 to infinity here it is uh, true for uh, all right and uh, here uh, uh, we can also discuss that why this uh, uh, system uh, uh, is important why we have written only for system of first order equation because if you look at uh, any nth uh, 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 order differential equation say y n plus um, uh, a n y n a n minus 1 y n minus 1 a n minus 2 y n minus 2 and so on. So, here we can say that if you look at any uh, 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 this nth order uh, 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 differential equation here this a n may be functions. So, here a n um, a i is uh, a n a n minus 1 and so on all these are may be function or may be constant values. So, we can say that this can also be written and uh, in system of first order equation the only thing we here we have to observe that x 1 is let us say y and x 2 is uh, y dash and so on we can define um, x n minus 1 as uh, y uh, x 1 is y and x 2 as y dash. So, x n minus 1 is y n minus 2. So, x n is given as y n minus 1. So, here we can write this as say x 1 dash is basically y dash. So, which is nothing but x 2. So, x 2 dash is y double dash that is nothing but uh, uh, x 3 and so on we can define x n minus 1 dash is equal to y n minus 1 that is given as x n and x n dash is given as uh, y n and this is uh, this you can write it minus 1 upon a n provided that this a n is non zero and you can write down uh, this as uh, um, this a n minus 1 y n minus 1 is given as x n uh, minus uh, plus a n minus 2 and x n minus 1 and so on. So, here we can simply say that this I can write it here as um, x 1 to say x n dash is equal to now here what we have written x 1 dash is equal to x 2. So, it is x 2 x 3 x 4 and so on here we have written minus 1 upon a n and this thing and if you further simplify this you can write this as x 1 to x n and here we can write down uh, 0 1 and so on and 0 0 1 and so on. So, I um, um, request you to complete this that any nth order differential equation uh, with the um, uh, uh, coefficient may be constant may be function can be written as x dash equal to uh, this thing and we can write that it is a particular case of this quantity. So, it means that uh, um, if we know the existence and uniqueness theorem for this uh, system of first order equation then we know existence and uniqueness theorem for this. So, it means that here we have assumed that uh, our uh, function f t x is continuous with respect to x. So, here we say that uh, f t x is nothing but coefficient here. So, here if coefficients are continuous then by existence and uniqueness theorem for system of first order equation we say that it will also have a solution. And similarly uh, you can um, consider any uh, nth order equation y n equal to f um, t y uh, y dash up to y n minus 1 to uh, again system of first order equation that is uh, x dash equal to uh, f x comma y. Uh, idea is same that you assume x 1 as uh, y x 2 as y dash and so on. So, here we have x n as y n minus 1 and you can write down x 1 dash is equal to x 2 x 2 dash equal to x 3 and so on x n dash is equal to y n that is given as uh, your f and here it is what t and uh, it is x 1 to x n minus 1 here. So, you can simplify this and you can write x 1 to x n here derivative is equal to now here we can define uh, this as um, x 1 uh, sorry x 2 x 3 and so on uh, at last here we have x 1 x 2 and so on and this you can you can call as f t x. So, it means that any nth order nonlinear differential equation as well as uh, linear differential equation 
with, with the Gaussian coefficient or uh, variable coefficient can be written as system of first order equation that is x is equal to f t x. So, it is sufficient to discuss the existence and uniqueness theorem for system of first order uh, ordinary differential equation. So, uh, we in this uh, lecture we have uh, discussed uh, uh, several things uh, that how the existence and uniqueness theorem given for uh, scalar equation, uh, scalar differential equation can be generalized for system, uh, system and with this uh, we, we, we may cover the um, all the ordinary differential equation whether it is uh, single uh, uh, scalar uh, first order, second order or nth order. So, <coughs> here we have say uh, said that uh, if it satisfy the um, Lipschitz condition then we have a unique uh, existence and uniqueness both. If it satisfy only the uh, continuity then uh, uh, it has a solution it may not be unique, but if uh, it satisfy one more condition that if function f is uh, satisfying the um, uh, continuity as well as the monotonically non uh, decreasing uh, condition then it will have a unique solution. So, here with this uh, we stop and we will discuss um, new things in next lecture. Thank you very much. <coughs>